Lord has been and is continuing to speak and to move uh, in our church and in our midst. Uh, got something very special and very exciting that I want to do right now. And so I'm going to ask uh, my dear brother, uh, Brother Larry Hodge, if he would, uh, to come to the platform at this time. As most of you all know, I'm a man of very few words. I've never been able to speak in front of people. Now, forgive me for reading this to, from the paper and, and pray for me that I can get through this. <clears throat> I grew up in South Carolina in a not so perfect home. My dad was an alcoholic, but was a good provider. Mom was always a good manager of money, so even with his problems, we always ate food and clothes. I can still remember him taking us to church some Sunday morning and drop us off and be back after church to pick us up. As far as I know, he never graced the doors of a church other than to attend a funeral. We always spent two weeks vacations at my grandmother's here in Little City. Some vacations, we never saw my dad from the second day we arrived to the day we left. <clears throat> in my teenage years, I started spending my entire summer breaks here in Tennessee with my grandmother. I met a girl on one of those summer va visits. We dated long distance for a few years. Her dad was the pastor of Pawpaw Plains Baptist Church. It was on one of these summer visits in either 64 or 65 that I attended a revival there and was saved but not baptized. I went to high school in Aiken, South Carolina, some 20 miles from the small town where I lived and had to ride the bus every day. Not having but a handful of friends, drugs were getting, just getting started there. I didn't want to get involved with that, so I decided to move to Tennessee as soon as I graduated. So two weeks after I graduated in 68, I got on a bus and headed to Tennessee. About a month after I moved to Tennessee, one of my best friends that I had grown up with was found hanged in a tree about two, two blocks from my old home. My grandmother was getting up in years by then, so I lived with her and helped around the yard work, grocery shopping and such. I then met another girl in 69 and we dated a while and ended up getting engaged. It was in 69 that I was baptized at First Baptist Church here in Little City. Her dad never cared for me and figured I wouldn't make a good husband, so we finally broke off the engagement in 74. <clears throat> By that time, I had found a job at Marymount and Loudoun. One of my co-workers fixed me up with a blind date with Pam. <laughs> Some people said she must have been blind, I'm not sure. <laughs> Pam's dad was a Baptist preacher, <clears throat> so I must have a thing for preacher's daughters. <laughs> we got engaged in 75 and were married in November 27th, 76 and just celebrated our 46th wedding anniversary. Over the next several years, we got really lax in going to church. In 83, we joined Calvary, but we weren't very active. I let my hobbies and work interfere with my church. <clears throat> One of my hobbies that I let get in my way was what I call semi-professional bass fishing. And I was spending five to seven days a week either working or on the lake fishing. I let it, let it consume everything about my life in church. I know we're not supposed to test God, but for some reason I did. We were having a revival here at Calvary, and there was a big tournament going on on Sunday. I prayed, which I shouldn't have, 
I prayed to let me do good in that tournament, and if I, would, if I did good, that I would never fish another tournament on a Sunday. Well, you guessed it. I won the tournament in a brand new bass boat. <laughs> so if my memory is correct, I have never fished on a Sunday again. Since that day, we've been through good, some ups and downs here at Calvary. But we've weathered the storm and we're still here. God wasn't through testing me, though. As you know, Pam and I's biggest thing together was motorcycle riding. We've rode several hundred thousand miles together over the past 10 years. <clears throat> I know now that she was doing it more because I loved it and she just wanted to spend time with me. Some things I'm about to say, I've never even told Pam. <clears throat> As most of you know, on March 21st, 2014, Pam and I had a very serious motorcycle accident in Daytona Beach. We T-boned a truck that for some reason turned in front of us. I won't go into the details about that. I was thrown across the truck and landed about 30 yards down the road on my back with only a few scrapes and bruises. Pam wasn't that lucky. When I got to her, she was back gasping for breath and blood was coming out of her mouth. At that time, I had no idea the extent of her injuries but I knew it was bad. We were both transported to Halifax Medical Center in Daytona. That night, I finally found out how bad it was. I prayed that night for God to heal her, but if that wasn't going to happen, to just take me instead. From there, we got back to Lenore City, and I think every church in Loud County had us on the prayer chain not to mention other parts of the United States. <clears throat> Pam spent the next week in the trauma center, then the next three weeks in rehab in Halifax. They told us it would most likely take six to eight weeks, but there again, God had other plans. She was able to get well enough in four weeks. After getting back home, the next couple of months were spent in home therapy, then the rest of the seven months in office therapy three days a week. Some people have asked how I managed not to get hurt worse than what I was, and I truly believe it's God, a God thing, knowing how much attention Pam would need over the course of her recovery. There are many other things that happened during this time that had to be from prayers, but I won't bore you with all of these. I say that to say this, we truly do have a praying, loving church here at Calvary. And if you don't believe prayers work, you're looking at two people. I can tell you it does. Again, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thanks again for all the prayers, cards, calls, texts, food, and friendship we've received over the very trying point in our lives. Thank you. <clears throat> 